What's up, everybody? This is Golden Spaces. This is a post Christmas episode special, right? We have Karima here, and we have a special guest, Janelle Moore here. Hi, um, how you doing? Great, great. Um, if you're not familiar, you should be familiar with Janelle. But if you're not, she wears many hats in the media space, right? Writer, um, reporter, analyst, everything under the sun. Um, you can kind of tell us a little bit more about where people can find your work before we start, but um, yeah. Okay. Welcome. Yeah, you can find me at uh, Anscape these days. Anscape, I do a little bit of football for Carolina Blitz. Um, and whenever I can, I, I do work up about the Warriors for the Mercury, whenever I can. Nice, nice. So we're happy to have you on. We're going to review this game from the Nuggets and the Warriors. Pretty frustrating game. Um, <sighs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But in some ways, encouraging and, and, and in a lot of ways, frustrating, which has kind of been like the theme of the season so far. <laughs> um, the Warriors lose 120 to 114 to the Nuggets, uh, missing Draymond, missing Gary Payton. The Nuggets were pretty much at full strength. Um, and it was not not the same exact story from the first time they met, but same result. Right. Very close loss in Denver without miss without Draymond. I'm pretty sure Gary missed the first one, too. I think uh, so. Yeah. yeah, I think so. So you're missing your two best defenders against what's under most people's eyes, like the best offense in the league. Um, and you hold them relatively in check. And it just comes down to the wire of, you know, mostly Steph and Clay could have made a few more shots that would have put them over the top. Um, it's the same story as the first game. But um, Kareem, we'll start with you. What did you think of the game like overall? Overall, I, I thought that we came out kind of decent considering it's an early game and it's in Denver in that altitude. So it was kind of a little, little bumpy, like, Hey, what's happening? What's happening? But then we started to find our legs and we started really, I think playing well, of course. Yeah. Stefan, he's not known to play well on Christmas day. So we could just chalk that up to, Hey, if he happened to play well on Christmas day, Hey, that's your gift. That's your, your Christmas yeah. gift. Yay, he played well. <laughs> but he played consistent to what, hey, on Christmas Day, you're not going to get the best of Stephen Curry. The unfortunate part was that Clay kind of got a little bit of what Steph normally brings on Christmas Day. So that was kind of the bummer there. Because if we just got a little bit more from either one of them, I think we win this game because our bench was super solid. What we outscored them 50 to 15. Like, mm -hmm. come on. That that's amazing. We we do have really a great bench. So I think overall we we played really well, even with what the bozos in the stripes were doing. Because that <laughs> that was disgusting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Janelle, what do you think? I agree with Karima here. All things considered, this was encouraging. I mean, it, it could have been worse. It could have been far worse than um, what what is what has been expected. That bench, our bench is amazing. At one point, the bench outscored the Nuggets bench like twenty eight to eight. I think it it was like that around halftime. And of course, you know, Steph playing like trash on Christmas Day is a given. And um, but e but even with that, we were hanging in there and we even had the lead. Yeah. A, a, a few more tweaks here and there. I think we could have won this game. And what really stood out to me was how Jokic was so far up trying to defend the pick and roll. Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all noticed that? And mm -hmm. If I'm not mistaken, I don't remember us really taking advantage of it. And that's where someone like a Kaminga could have stepped in, you know, and it could have really killed them more on the inside. Even it, we outscored them in points in the paint, but it could have been even more. Mm -hmm. And that could have turned the game around and we could have won it if we would have attacked more inside. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's what I saw. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think 
the first thought that comes to mind when you see Jokic and Michael Porter Jr., whoever it was, that were coming up to blitz that screen at the top of the key is this is where Draymond kind of makes to makes his money on the team, being able to take the ball in those situations and make the right read and apply rim pressure, right? A lot of times it's Looney there instead. So Looney catches it and he doesn't have the burst off the dribble to really affect the defense. Like they don't move towards him at all. Yeah. And then Steph is just much less willing to make that pass to Looney in those situations. So he's kind of holding the ball for a little bit longer and, and stuff like that. So um, Denver put you in a dilemma because theoretically, like you said, you could just put Kaminga there and he can get the ball and go downhill, but teams aren't going to guard Looney if he's in the dunker spot. Right. So, but you need Looney on the court theoretically to guard Jokic. So it's like, ah, and what do we do? To rebound as, as and to well. rebound against Jokic. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, this is where you really see the absence of Draymond show up um, on the offensive end in particular, but on the defensive end, obviously him being able to push the pace, guard multiple positions and stuff like that. I don't think MPJ goes off the way he did if Draymond is playing. Uh, I don't think Jamal Murray goes off the way he did if Draymond and Gary are both playing, but um, yeah. We don't see too much of CP, three. Too, yeah. And it's like they kind of he was actually playing pretty decent. So they, they played him more. But like when you play him and Steph together against Jokic, it's it's not enough length and defense on the court to really affect Jokic. He's going to just pick you apart with the passing because you're going to have to send multiple people. And Steph and, and CP3 just aren't athletic or big enough at this point in their careers to really make those rotations as fast as they need to be. So preferably you only have one of them on the court and you can kind of hide them and then like Use yeah. four other athletes that can that can cover up the ground there, um, but yeah, the the spot on as far as starters versus bench. The the starters were mostly negative. Um, Pajemski was a was a positive because he played a lot with the bench. Clay was a minus two. Steph was a minus twenty six. Um, Kaminga was a minus twenty four. Looney was a minus nine, and a lot of our bench guys were just you know double digit positive. And then you look at the Nuggets. Their starters plus 13 plus 23 plus 21 plus 20 so they were just kind of blitzing our starters and then their bench is like minus 14 minus 20. i mean that's at least looking at it on paper that's what i would imagine would happen as far as their bench being massive negatives because they don't have a good bench they have a bunch of young guys and reggie jackson like they're not going to do well against our bench i think that's our major advantage against them but they have to find a way to close that gap with the starters and i think i mean draymond is probably the lowest hanging fruit that can make that happen yeah what did you guys think of i know we already alluded to it but what did you guys think of the the Jokic 18 free throws um an abomination i mean yeah. disgusting but, but look how we held Jokic to not a fantastic shooting night at all so we mm -hmm. we did a really good job on him it was him really getting all his points, 18 of them at the line. And there were just the wind blew and then the whistle was blown. Mm -hmm. He was doing a tremendous amount of flopping mm -hmm. and they were not calling the flops. So we can just harken back to the previous game where Steph literally landed on the floor, got back up and went straight into ready to play defense. Boop flopping mm -hmm. from back there. But Yoki, the alleged offensive foul that was called on Curry because of a push off and Jokic flies all the way back. Are you kidding me? 300 right. pounds to like a buck 25 soaking wet. Like, what are we doing? Really? Yeah. Really? It, mm -hmm. it was really disgusting <clears throat> actually because, and it just, it slowed the game just to a halt. And then you were just sitting there like, okay, we can do something on the other end. We're not going to get the call because Curry clearly got fouled driving in the lane, which apparently we don't do. That's why we don't get calls. But he was taking everything inside, but nobody touched him, not ever on any of his drives. And then you go down, Jokic, he's just, you know, mixing it up with, who was that, uh, Dario or something? And Dario gets mm -hmm. called the foul. It, it, it was just like, what are we doing? Like, mm -hmm. it, it's just yeah. so frustrating. And then you can see that that's where we start to unravel because it's like, listen, we know that we foul, but y'all are really, really just trying to snatch the game from us. Because as soon as we're 
on this roll, now the whistles are getting quick and fast and nothing for us. Seven took one free throw. Yep. It was a technical. Was it a tech? Yeah. A technical yeah. foul free throw. You mm -hmm. get three seconds in the lane. Like that's and I'm pretty sure it. they that that three seconds took away a step three it, too. Yep, took away his first. Yeah. Three. It mm -hmm. was like, all right, he's making it, and everybody's like, wow, for real. Like, yo. yeah, you can hear oh. Steve on the sideline when that happened too. Like, yo, you guys just took away a three. Yeah, from us, like, like yeah. thanks, but no thanks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, and just just phantom calls as well. TJD didn't even touch Jokic on one of those plays. There were three Warriors around Jokic, but nobody touched him. Mm -hmm. They called a foul, and everybody's like, "But, but yeah. I ain't even, I, I ain't even." So <laughs> exactly, like we're handcuffed. Yet we still try to play through all of that, and we lose by six. Make it make sense. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, that, that doesn't make sense. And I'm glad Steve Kerr said something about it post-game. Not only Steve said something, Steve said something, Pod said something, and Steph did too. Yeah. I mean, we get it. You know, we foul, but a lot of those calls were egregious yesterday. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, it's, and it's been like that, not only in this game, but even games spanning from la last season, you know what I mean? <laughs> Our whole team and it's also, it's also a trend league-wide. And you notice these highest scores we, we have here, 150 points, 144 points. That's because they're taking defense out the game. Mm -hmm. We can't play defense no more. Yep. You can't even fart on certain players in this game. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and, that's, and that's not it. I <laughs> said something about it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. look, that, it, she's absolutely correct because it was on display Christmas Day, and mm -hmm. you have final MVPs, you have uh, MVPs of the regular season out there, champions out there. Mm -hmm. One of them is getting a superstar call, while the other is getting even less than a rookie call mm -hmm. because. The rookies in on Denver probably got more calls than mm -hmm. what Curry gets. So it's, 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 I just feel like how, how can we win this? It just feels like, why are we the only ones it, that can see this? Right. And it's, it's messed up. And Steve made a good point where it's like, it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily the ref's fault. I do right. think the refs are mostly bad in the NBA, but it's the rules that they have to implement, right? It's just, they're just soldiers in the system, right? Like they just have yeah. to call what they're told to call. And it, it disproportionately affects the Warriors because the Warriors have a, a team of players who aren't good at flopping. So right. they can't benefit from those rules. Right. Whereas right. other teams have guys who are just actually just really good at it and they know how to work the system. So it's not necessarily anti-Warriors. It's just like, well, we just, we can't benefit from this system. The system is already flawed, and we have a team of players that just can't benefit from the system, right? We see guys who try to flop and end up punching people in the face on our team. But um, we we definitely got guys like Steph is just not really good at it. Like, he likes to kick his leg out sometimes on threes, sell calls. These are calls that he should be getting routinely. Like, guys always come under his feet when he shoots threes. Guys routinely, like, close out too close to him. But he got to move his legs out of the way so he doesn't hurt his ankles. Um, yeah, so it's just – it's a flawed system. And the Warriors just aren't in position to benefit from that system. And we saw it yesterday. Um, Jokic is at half court rest, wrestling with a guy and gets free throws from it. It's like in that particular situation, that's no advantage for any team. That's just you just yeah. let them keep playing. Like no team is benefiting from you not calling this call. Yeah. So why just give them free gift them free throws in that in that manner? It doesn't make any sense. Um, so yeah, it was just it was just unfortunate because it kind of ruined a really good game. Um, it still was a good game down to the wire, but it could have been an even better game if we just let them play and let the the, the basketball on the court determine who really won the game. But, um, yeah, 32 free throws of 23, many of which were the, the Nuggets just in the bonus getting ticky-tack calls. Yep. You know what I mean? Not even shooting yeah. fouls, just in the bonus. So that's yep. just that's unfortunate. Um, but, yeah, I mean, like I was saying before, I think this is a kind of encouraging 
loss in a way. We don't want to do moral victories, but Ben showed up. Um, everybody pretty much is Steph, except Steph and Clay shot making showed up. Yeah. And you you want you feel like that's not going to be a continued trend, right? Steph and Clay are going to make shots yeah. when it's when it's time to make shots. But um, yeah, but um, going forward, obviously we're missing two of our key defense defensive players and key rotational players, and they're coming back at some point. Right. right? We saw even Moses Moody kind of got squeezed out of the rotation last game because Wiggins' <laughs> minutes went up and he came back from his uh, illness. There's two more guys coming back. So <laughs> what does that do to the minutes distribution? What does that do to the rotation? That's a question that they have to answer. Like, who's going to get squeezed out of the rotation? Will it be Kaminga? Because he even got squeezed out of the second half rotation for Wiggins playing well. So it's like, we don't know yeah, what's going to happen. That was crazy. Uh, I think Kaminga played only three minutes and 35 seconds in the fourth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think I believe had he played more and played alongside Wiggins, that might have been the difference also. And, you know, them going downhill could have circumvented, you know, that stretch where everybody's getting three happy and missing all those threes. Yeah. And that yeah. is something that Kerr would have to figure out when everybody comes back. Who is expendable in the lineup? And even mm -hmm. to think about it before the trade deadline, who gets moved in a, a consolidated trade you know mm -hmm. or should we make a trade yeah the, those are all just it's just tough and i i don't i don't feel good about any of it like i just because i think moody should get more time i i think i personally think he's earned more time to play. And yes, Wiggins came back. Great game from Wiggins. I'm happy to see, you know, that he played as well as he did considering he was ill, but he had some time off to get some rest. But for him to come out in that kind of altitude, he was he was, he was really super solid and that was good to see. But I again, like Janelle said, I don't know why um Kaminga couldn't have been in there alongside him and then now it's like okay but now who are you pushing off the court I guess that means Looney gets off of there and then you're just mm -hmm. playing with the more athletic kind of we're gonna run and gun and we're gonna need you guys to step up and get some rebounds while he's out it, mm -hmm. you know but then also okay Oh, Wiggins was playing great, but that doesn't mean that Moody still can't get in there and play with Clay. Like, I, I don't know. I just, I don't want to see Moody traded because I just feel like he's put in so much and he swallowed a lot to then kind of just be packaged up with something. Granted, he doesn't have like, people aren't like calling Moody, 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 Moody. Right. But, you know, we don't want to lose Kaminga either. Right. No, it's I mean, I think <sighs> I think ultimately when the team is whole, because Kerr wants to have a certain sure. skill set on the court at the end of the games, right? Like he needs right. someone to be able to handle the ball outside of Steph. So right. that's so CP3 most of the time is going to be in, especially if Draymond is out. And then you need somebody to match up with Jokic. So you're going to have a Looney in there. But I do think if the team is at full strength. They probably will experiment a little bit more with Steph, Clay, Wiggins, Kaminga, and Draymond at the five. Because mm -hmm. Draymond can just kind of do the CP3 thing where he's just handling the ball and making the decisions once they blitz Steph. And then yeah. you still maintain your athleticism. You still keep Clay on the court to, to provide the extra shooting and spacing. And then you got your two athletes um, out there with Wiggins and Kaminga. Um, but like you said, going forward, they just have – they have so many players. Like Kerr said, they have more good players than rotation spots. And that's just a fact, right? Like most teams aren't going to go 11 deep, 12 deep, but they do have 11, 12 players that can help. So it's like, what do you do? You know, and, they, and it seems at times, or at least up to this point in the season, it has seemed like they're missing a void of just another really high level player. So it's like, do you turn a few of those players? extra pieces that are outside of the rotation into one really good player that can just eat up 30 minutes a game rather than splitting those up 15, 16, 15, 16, all throughout the roster. That's for Mike and, and all those guys to determine, but 
it's a it's a problem, right? Like we said before the season even started, it's a good problem in quotations yeah. <laughs> that you got so many guys who can contribute, but at the end of the day, it becomes an issue because guys that can help are just sitting on the bench. And the guys that are playing, are they good enough to rationalize it? Right? Like some days Moody's better than Kaminga. Some days Kaminga's better than Moody. Some days both of them are better than Wiggins and vice versa. Like, so do you just keep all three and just try to toe the margins like as much as you can? Or do you move one or two of them to get a better guy in there? It's just, it's a tough, tough question. Yeah. It um, is a tough question, but I believe that it depends on what's out there. We don't even know what's out there to um, warrant a, a trade. We mm -hmm. don't know what's out there. We don't know which teams will be able to help us. So it, it is, this is a good problem to have. And it forces Kerr to really manage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know that's, I know that's a tough ask for him because he's so stuck in his way and just hella stubborn, but He's going to have to make some really tough decisions. For and, sure. And that's I mean, you know, he, he may have to go 12 deep. I mean, it just forces him to really match and pair what skill sets coincide, you know? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Then you, I mean, you, even if you do that, you kind of got to like toe the line. The players have to be ready for that, for one, for yeah. two when you when you kind of get inconsistent minutes or lower levels of minutes then the rhythm thing kind of is at play as well it's like can you really get a full rhythm if you're not playing 20 or more minutes and where do the minutes come from so it's it's a tough task i think it makes it much easier if you just downsize but in the meantime he's going to have to make those tough decisions and say okay maybe a guy who would usually play 30 minutes a game is going to have to play 22 so this other guy can get his extra eight minutes in there so it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Um, so do you see it as, Justin, do you see it as actually being possible? Let's just say, listen, we don't have the funds to get said player that's out there. Let's just, right now, let's just say it's Siakam that they want to have. So mm -hmm. Siakam, he comes in. Is he a starter or is he coming off the bench? If you're paying that kind of price tag. Oh, Oh, he's right. Not. And so are we keeping Wiggins as our sixth man or, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. where does that go? Because then now who have we given up on that bench to acquire Siak? Mm -hmm. So now yeah. that means you, did you have to get rid of Kaminga? Did you have to now get rid of CP3 plus we're going to need you to give us Moody too. Like, and then now the bench is not the, the number one bench in the league anymore because mm. you've depleted it because you wanted to get this one player that you feel like, okay, now we can have a tighter rotation, but yeah. really, guys are really from the bench that have kept us in games and have, you know, really kind of kept us afloat here while we are missing two of our players, our defensive yeah. players, because now when GP2 comes back, okay, yeah, he's filling one slot, but I, I don't know. Mm. I'm just like, can we yeah. make this work really with who we have without getting somebody? Is it actually doable? I think so. It just has to be like, you got to really, really, get the best version out of out of this thing right like i mean it probably involves somebody being pushed out of the rotation that's just a reality of it um but whoever is left in the rotation has to play up to their ceiling and that's just going to have to happen for them to reach the best version of this team but i mean to your first point i do think they have enough depth because we said they can go 12 deep they have enough depth that if they trade two or three guys and get back one guy they'll still probably have like the best bench in the league i think Okay. It depends on who you send out, how those combinations fit. Because if you, let's say you you get, you go for a guy like Siakam, right? Yeah. He's not a, really a shooter. He's a mid-range shooter, but he's not really a long, he's not a spacer, right? So if you move him, you most likely would have to move like Kaminga, somebody who plays his similar skill set and operates in the same area of the court. Um, whereas if you try to go for a guy like Laurie Markkinen, who is a spacer, you can probably keep Kaminga 
theoretically, right? Utah would yeah. probably ask for him. But as far as play style, <laughs> you can keep him and potentially move somebody like Wiggins, who provides more of the space, because now you bring in a spacer, right? So it's all about the combinations, um, theoretically, what you would do, what you would be left over with. And you got to make sure that you're not trading a skill set that you need for a player that doesn't fit that same skill set. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. You don't want to trade you know, all your spacer you- away. Right, and then you lose the defense that Wiggins brings. Potentially. So it's it's. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, you you be putting a lot of pressure on Kaminga to step up defensively, but there, I mean, they they got a lot of different. And this is what they wanted. They wanted the options, right? Optionality was the right. word, the buzzword, right? Yeah. So now they they got an option to stay put and just see what they got with the full strength team. They got the option to try to trade for somebody, um, but they do have options. So whatever they decide to do, I guess we'll end up seeing what happens. And I think there's a light at the end of the tunnel of both paths, but mm-hmm. it's just more so about like, which one is a more for sure thing, but who knows which one is a more for sure thing. We haven't seen well, this team at full strength all season. Right. So, so you're also saying just really quick and then we can uh, move from this, but we're full strength. Everything's mm-hmm. a go. Mm-hmm. We've got Wiggins still coming off the bench because I think he's actually really helping that bench mob out. Um, and it feels like he's even more energized in that uh, unit. But everybody's there. You're the GM now. We're clicking on all sectors. Yeah, we had to, you know, move some minutes around because maybe Dario – doesn't get as many minutes because he's hurting us on the defensive end, but we've got Moody still who can pick up on the defensive end and he can shoot too. So as the GM, are you making a trade? We're cooking on all cylinders. We seem to be moving good. Some minutes have had to be moved. Some guys just aren't playing as many, but we're winning. Mm -hmm. We're climbing up in the playoff standing. What are you doing at the trade deadline? Ooh. Um, if it was up to me, it depends on who's available. <laughs> Let's say both Pascal and Laurie Markin are, are available. I probably still do the trade because, because I think ultimately this team is currently constructed, does still have the roster to be a great regular season team and even a good playoff team. But I do think you need a star level player in their prime still to put on this team, to put them over the top against the very best teams of the league, at okay. least to shore it up. I think it's still possible. Like I say, if they click in and they're, they're rising the standings, I would say it's still possible that they can make something happen. But I think it will be you have a higher chance if you have a prime Lloyd Marketing or a prime Pascal Siakam next to Steph and Clay and Draymond. That would be much more, I think, reliable than, you know, the other, all the other pieces, like, you know, so. And see, Occam's only played in a final once. Okay. Okay. He won it, though. (laughs) Did he, though? Did he? No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, Laurie Martin has never been to the playoffs, so you'd be gambling on that. But, I mean, I would take a gamble on him over the depth pieces that we have. You know, he's much more proven player than a lot of the depth guys, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, he'll, yeah, so that's what I would do. Janelle, you know, what would you do? I think I would do the same because when it comes to the playoffs, the rotations shrink anyway. Mm-hmm. And I would rather have a player that's um, proven in the regular season and, but can fit within our system, especially defensively. So I, I would make a trade. I, I, I believe I would. But, you know, it depends on who's, like you said, Justin, depends on who's available and who can we send out without it affecting us. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Because that's are, are you team? Are you team stay put? I'm, for me, I'm team stay put only because I just believe that what we have, and I think I'm just putting a lot of confidence in our three-year players who just, you know, have stuck it out and worked hard mm. throughout everything. Wow. Like for me, most What if you don't have to move? What if you don't have to move any of the young guys? Okay. If we don't have to move any of the young guys, then 
is okay, <laughs> but but I would I wouldn't want to move any of our rookies. And I feel like moving Wiggins just I don't think that that for him to take a discount just mm -hmm. I mean that to me holds something that he said even coming off of his amazing playoff run and helping us get that chip to then say I want to be here I will mm -hmm. take this cut because I believe in this squad and I want to be here to then we cut him loose because he came out just just playing horribly but he wasn't alone playing horribly but we're willing to just be like all right well I mean we love you dude but you gotta go because we want to get Siaka and it's like Siaka better I wouldn't move away you would? I would not. Oh, Siakam's okay. the type of player you bring in with Wiggins in mind on the team because Wiggins okay. is a much more reliable shooter on the wing. But I'm kind of just like, who, then who do we have left really that you're moving? For me, because I'm like, <laughs> I want to keep Kaminga and Moody because know, of right? them yeah. sticking it out. And Moses, since he, he won us that Dallas game <laughs> like, in the playoffs. Like, you can't like... He came in with playing like zero minutes, just thrown into the fire in that mm -hmm. Dallas series. He won us that. Get like, I I can't just not see that he did that, and mm -hmm. he always came in ready to go no matter what. That's how he got that's, stay ready. Yeah, that's. How I mean, that's the dilemma. That's the dilemma, right? It's like that's all. Like, good guys. Just be like, all right. Yeah. They're, they're good guys. They've done what's asked of them. They've played well. Mm -hmm. So you don't you don't want to, I guess, reward them with being traded, right? <laughs> right, like, <laughs> right. Like you can say that about literally about everybody on this roster. I mean, Draymond yeah. has obviously done dumb stuff, but basketball wise, it doesn't make sense to trade him unless you're getting like a, a star, star level back. Right. But as far as the young guys, Pods, Trace. Kamenga and Moody, they've all done what's been asked of them up to this point, and they're all good. You can see it on the court. They're good players, right? Wiggins took a discount, helped them win a championship, good guy, has never caused trip issues in the, in the locker room, anything like that. Looney, same thing, done everything that's asked of him. And to be honest, CP3 is coming, he's done everything that's been asked of him. So it's like, yeah. I mean, it's he, not he, like he, a, yeah, get them out of here type of deal, but it's like, uh, we might have to send one or two of y'all, three of y'all out of here. If we want to win a championship, and it's like it's it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. But you can also stamp, say put, and see what happens, and maybe it works out, but maybe it doesn't. Who knows? It's very it's it's, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, yeah. We just and gotta see them at full strength. We see and that saying put might might be the move that they have to make because you, you realize that that. That apron, that second apron, and and all of that stuff that goes with it, they, they might have to stay put, knowing the financial situation they're in, and mm -hmm. you don't want to, you you don't have a lot of money to waste, to, you know, just to make a move for the sake of it. So it might yeah. be to where they would have to stay put. It could be, it could be. I mean, at the same time, if you look at uh, Siakam is expiring, so like they would have to, they would be able to reshuffle still in the off season. And marking his contract is only like 18 mil. So yeah. he's not like really hurting the, the, the pockets. But like, yeah, you, you still gotta you gotta keep that in mind as well. Um as far as like the moves you make. But I mean, I ultimately think they're not gonna do anything until the deadline, which is more than enough time to see what this team is. I think and at that point, like Kareem said, if they're if they're hot, it's like dang, right? We got a good team, but it's also like, oh, we're hot. Teams might want our players more because they're playing. Work. It's, it's going to be so many different dynamics and variables at play that it's going to be super interesting to see what they actually do. Um, yeah. But let's look ahead. Let's look ahead as, as far as their schedule. I mean, they've won five of the last, last six. They were on a five-game winning streak before this game. Would have been nice to add on to that. Yeah. But they got – um, what is it, six Miami. straight? Yeah, yeah, they got seven straight. Seven straight home games starting with Miami. Um on thursday right so they got a nice little break today and tomorrow off i'm pulling up the schedule right now um mm -hmm. 
they got Miami on Thursday. They got Dallas on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Mm. And yeah. on the second, they have Orlando, and then they have a back-to-back versus Denver again, and then Detroit. Yep. Mm. On the fourth and the fifth. Mm-hmm. So that's – even though it's all home games, these are not easy games, right? Miami's a good right. team. Uh, Dallas is kind of rolling. Luka is just on a different – level we know how luca does he's a very very tough player orlando is one of the better teams in the east this season um and they beat the Warriors twice last season yeah <laughs> and, yeah, and they're gonna it. remember that they're gonna remember that and the fact yeah. that they're playing so well they are gonna want to come in and just spoil things so sure. we got to be ready Nancy Pods last season. So, you know, Nancy Pods. <laughs> I don't know if they even saw Kaminga. might have been in the doghouse at that right. point. But <laughs> <laughs> then you got Denver again at home finally. Um, and then Detroit, and then Toronto and New Orleans. So, to close out that homestand, these are like all decent teams other than Detroit. Detroit's kind of pathetic, but, um, Listen. you know, Toronto <laughs> is frisky and mm-hmm. New Orleans is frisky as well. So, these yeah. are all tough games um even though they're at home hopefully they win most of them um i think they match up favorably with miami and dallas but we'll see um yeah. orlando has a ton of length and athleticism and defense and they're just you know one of those super young teams that plays extremely hard for the entire game so that's going to be i'm um, going to be curious to see what happens there but they owe denver they already lost twice to them i think they beat denver in a regular season like once out of the last like three years or something like that it's pretty annoying now, that you how do you think that i, I know how, i can see how golden state matches up with miami well but why do you think they match up well with dallas though um i think they have nobody to guard stuff that's one thing right then they they got like the whole lively thing he's kind of like their go bear in a way Right, put him in a pick and roll. I think it can compromise their defense, especially if Luke is involved there as well. Um, they've been decent defensively this season, but I think the Warriors' motion offense can kind of put them into some binds that they don't want to be in. And then, um, defensively, they're just like a spread out offense with just a singular, not a singular attack of Kyrie's there, but Luca's just like that individual attack. And it's the same, it's the same thing always with Luca. The, the Warriors know how to guard teams like that. It's just a matter of is Luca going to make every single tough shot that night or not? Um, and you just hope in Golden State he isn't making all of the contested step backs like he was making against right. the Suns last night. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think I think it's the same old, same old with Dallas, right? Pick and roll, get out to the shooters, and then on defense, make them guard multiple actions and see how they how they fare there. Um, and it should be a good game. Yeah, I think is Kyrie supposed to be back at that time? I think he's working his way to get back because okay. I did see see a clip on Twitter to where he was practicing. Hmm. Well, oh, okay. He wasn't playing, but he was practicing, and I think he's ramping up. All right, so he might not be back for us. But, you know, yeah. hey, things happen every time. Someone's going to come play the Warriors for the first yeah, time. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if Jimmy's back. I guess right. So, um, with Miami. And Bam. Wait, is Bam like out, 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 or not? Okay. Bam played. Yeah, oh, Bam played. Okay. So he's back. All right. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we'll see. We'll probably see Jimmy. We'll probably see Kyrie. Yeah. And um, yeah, it is what it is. Get two dubs. Get back on the winning, winning mode, and then we'll see. Probably at the end of that home stand or close to it, if Draymond is back at that point, that would be around like the three Gary. week mark. Like Gary, oh, Gary. Should be back within. I would hope within this mm-hmm. home stand here. Um, yeah, I think he's on five and five, right? Five and five practice. He should be now at this point. At this yeah. point, he is. And I think he's going to, he was supposed to be reevaluated in a few days now. Mm-hmm. Within okay. a week. So, yeah, he should be back within these next few games. Yeah. That'll be great for their defense, especially against um, Miami and Dallas. They need that point of attack defense against the guards and all that type of stuff. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what the rotation looks like when he's back. <laughs> It'll start to be a little interesting. Uh, just another, just, it's like layers here. Every time mm-hmm. we think we're getting closer to, all right, this is a good, you know, crew out here together. All right, it looks like we're, 
we're doing well here. Now someone's coming back. Yep. And now things get shuffled once again. So mm -hmm. it, it's like we're never going to be like <laughs> locked in. But like you always say, it's really about matchups. Yeah. If this lineup is working against this particular lineup, then that's who we roll with. And we just keep yeah. it moving. So yeah. and players got to be okay with that. Yeah. Um, it's hard to do, but it's just, I guess it is what it is the way this team is constructed right now. So mm. um, we got anything else? No. no. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the homestead. And I really, I just think everybody is really starting to, to find their groove now. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking they can harken back to that five game win streak that they had, that they're going to take this into this next one here and really kind of like push it and really yeah. go. So, yeah, I mean, the story of the season has been they beat the bad teams and they're in dog fights with the good teams and end yeah. up losing at the end or winning, <laughs> right? They beat Boston right. at the buzzer. I mean, not the buzzer, but they beat Boston close. They beat they the King close. close and they beat the Thunder close. But they've also lost to Denver twice close. The King, I mean the the Kings close. Kings, yep. Uh the Clippers close. They lost to OKC three times or two times close, and one was a blowout yeah. step in play. Minnesota close. Like, so now you got Miami, Dallas, Orlando, Denver. There's a, all four teams that are well above 500. Are you gonna be in dog fights with them and lose? <laughs> are you gonna get a, a blowout victory against a good team for once? Are you gonna beat them? Like, what's gonna happen? So this is a key point in the season i think for them to really figure out like how good they can be um obviously Draymond being out you always got to take that into consideration but um i think this is a opportunity for them to finally get over that hump and start winning consistently against good teams yes um, so yeah yeah well fingers crossed yeah. i i agree i mean when you look at the scope of this season um they have been in games they've been playing close but there's been a lot of these games, a lot of these 15 losses, we should have won. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of a lot of those issues have been self-inflicted in terms of defensive stops, you know, transition, mm -hmm. you know, the, the marginal things. Turnovers. So that's why, yeah, yeah the yeah. turnovers. We're, we're a bakery, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 we're, we're a bakery we're Krispy Kreme you know but <laughs> these are things that are within their control uh, yeah. once we can control that we could start winning these games mm -hmm. and they know what they need to do yeah yep just so gotta go I out there and do it. it yeah I agree I agree well thank you guys thank you Janelle for, for joining and you know we enjoy your insight yeah, and uh, everybody you. continue to, you know, support her work and, you know, she's really good at what she does. So we appreciate you coming on. Karima, always a pleasure, of course. We're gonna put Thanks. The Thanks. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate you guys for having me on. And, you know, if y'all if y'all need me to come on, <laughs> I'm, I'm game for it. You know I am. Yeah. For sure. For sure. She's Definitely a gamer, Phil. Like. She's a gamer. She's a gamer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, appreciate you guys for tuning in. All right. Continue to support the pod. Please leave a good review wherever you listen to your podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. We will be more active on the TikTok stuff, too. Um, yeah. Interact with us. Send us some some questions if you want, whether in the YouTube comments under 95 to 7's YouTube channel under our podcast and um, on Twitter, whatever you want to send some some mailbag questions were always available. We will answer them on the next available pod. And um, hope you guys had a good holiday. Thank you for joining us. Yay. Peace.